Hello and welcome to One Electron Universe. Today we are going to explore an LED ceiling light. As you can see, this LED ceiling light is currently broken. It's it's flickering. So let's figure out what's wrong and in the process understand how this works. This is the transparent uh, cover to diffuse the light. Uh, if each of these bumps is an LED then there are about 48 uh, LEDs in this light. Uh, the back is a metal cover. Uh, looks like a heat sink uh, to diffuse uh, or to dissipate the heat generated by the LEDs. Uh, everything held together by three screws uh, and these are magnetic by the way. Uh, so this allows this light to be kind of hung from or stuck to a uh, compact fluorescent light uh, base uh, obviously it has to be a steel base for the magnets to work uh, and uh, let's look at the specs it uses about 18 to 24 watts of power the input voltage is around 175 to 265 50 60 hertz the output is 60 to 85 volts DC and uh, the current is 242 to 60 milliampers uh, of course the output has to be DC because that's how the LEDs are going to work. Uh, let's uh, open it up and see. Okay, pretty easy. Yeah, and yeah, there's a magnet. There you go. Well now, uh, while you open up, I'm sure you would know that the brightness of the LED uh, is controlled by the current flowing through it right the voltage drop and because an LED is a diode by design uh, the voltage across the voltage drop across it will be constant irrespective of the amount of current flowing once it's beyond uh, the voltage that's needed to switch on the diode okay let's uh, see how easy it opens yep and there you go simple okay let's look what's inside uh, so this is where the uh, mains come in and uh, this is uh, basically connected to a full bridge rectifier. Uh, this big capacitor is the filter uh, for the full bridge rectifier and uh, then if you see if you follow the circuit okay so there are some resistors some capacitors this is a constant current uh, chip it basically makes sure that a constant current of 240 to 260 milliampers flows through all the LEDs and as you can see these are all the LEDs mm, and in fact here yeah so this looks like the name of the LED uh, this is the output side of the circuit I believe and uh, this is uh, an inductance uh, this is not actually this I don't think this is used as a transformer it's more used as an inductance uh, to take out the ripples from the circuit okay uh, in fact what I did was so I took the circuit and I transcribed it uh, on easy EDA so this is uh, what it looks like let's have a closer look let's switch to a computer and explore this further this is our LED driver circuit we need to identify the components so let's take a closer look yes much better I have transcribed this into an easy EDA circuit which will be easier to follow so let's just go there there you go so as you can see from the right uh, we have the mains powers coming in at 220 volts 50 Hertz MB10 FK this is a full wave bridge rectifier which converts AC into a, a DC this capacitor here the big one 6.8 microfarads this is here to reduce the ripples uh, or to smoothen out the output of the bridge rectifier PTC 4501C this is a very very interesting uh, chip and we'll, we'll come to this a bit later but this chip uh, controls the amount of current flowing through the circuit and uh, the way it controls is this resistor R1 uh, it measures the voltage drop across R1 so between this point and this point and what it does is this as it tries to maintain the voltage drop at around 0.6 volts or like 600 millivolts so in fact if you see uh, when we saw the specifications of the LED it said it has around it 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 
drives around 240 to 260 milliampers of current. Uh, you multiply that by this and you effectively get around 650 milliampers. So 600, sorry, 650 millivolts. So that's the current that's looking at 650 millivolts is what the voltage it is trying to um, maintain across this resistor. So if we wanted to change uh, the, let's say the brightness of the LED, what we need to do is we need to change the resistance here. So uh, if you increase the resistance, uh, the voltage drop will increase uh, and the current controller will try to then reduce the current which will then dim the LEDs. Now the way the LEDs, these LED lights are manufactured, they, they are normally meant to be driven at a maximum kind of current, at maximum brightness so that you have to use lesser LEDs and of course it has the, as far as the sellers or the manufacturers are concerned, there is an added advantage of them blowing up faster like the one which we just saw, uh, that means you will buy more, right? So this is what the circuit is. Now let's let's have a quick look at the data sheets of these. So first let's have a look at the bridge rectifier. It's a pretty straightforward one. So this is from Godark Semiconductor and I think the key thing that we need to see here is this one. Uh, if you see here, it basically can uh, manage up to 1000 volts and 700 volts RMS. So it's it's definitely over spec for this uh, application. Uh, but this is the key. This is the key specs that we are looking for. So it works. It, it's pretty good. Uh, uh, I would say it's a pretty good one. It's a generic one, but it's a pretty good one uh, when it comes to bridge rectifiers. Now, if you are keen to understand what a bridge rectifier does or what, let's say, the constant current source does, uh, I would urge you to watch my next video. And I, in fact, I would I could request if you can subscribe to this channel so that you will be notified as soon as I put up my next video for this. Uh, let's look at the next chip and the next chip was the tricky one. Uh, so that's this one, this PTC4501C. So when you search for PTC4501C, uh, what you basically end up getting is this. Now this is a TI, semiconductors and a chip and it's an old one. In fact, it's old enough that it says not recommended for new designs. So what is this? And in fact, if you notice, this is uh, a DC to DC converter, right? So uh, again, if you see from uh, from the mains, we are getting 220 volts AC, which effectively is around 312 volts peak DC. So when you convert it from AC to DC, you basically get a DC which peaks at around 311, 312 volts. Uh, the LEDs probably require around 60 to 70 volts when we do the maths right so you need to down convert the voltage so obviously this looks like this is it however one key thing to notice here is the logo here this logo i realize actually belongs to a chinese company called powertech so i went and searched again and guess what this is what it is powertech see the logo matches and this is actually the right chip, right? It this is the one PTC four five zero one C. This is the one which we are looking at. Not only the, not only is this the right chip, what you might also notice and realize is the recommended circuit here. Uh, I, let me just zoom in a bit more. Yeah, the recommended circuit here, in fact, very very closely matches what the actual LED light circuit looks like, which is this one right so this is the chip and again I don't read Chinese but I don't think we need to read Chinese uh, the only key parameters that we are really interested in are two things here uh, the first is that it can actually uh, it can actually drive 250 milliampers that is what we are looking for 250 240 milliampers right and what we are also looking for is that the voltage drop is around 0.6 volts, which is I believe, yeah, this is the one. So this is what we are actually looking for. This is the key parameter which is controlling this chip, right? Right. Uh, uh, we can also have a quick look at the LED spec. So this is the LED. Uh, in fact, this number was transcribed at the top of the LED light, uh, if you noticed earlier. And this LED, of course, works at two, three to six volt. Con it can do three to six volt configuration. Uh, uh, its uh, luminosity is 6500K and uh, I think yeah the key point here again uh, would be the driving current and as you notice here it's 250 milliampers uh, and as I said you would normally try to drive 
the LEDs uh, as bright as possible, right? Uh, so you try to push in as much current as you can through this. How, this definitely impacts the life of the LED, but it gives you maximum brightness uh, uh, and it saves a lot of manufacturing cost. All right, so let's go back to the circuit. Right, so as you notice now here, of course, I have uh, here I have only put one LED but there are actually 48 LEDs in series so as we see the mains currents come in from here they get rectified here and then this is the filter it's a very simple filter again one thing you might notice is that there there, is, that there, there was a recommended filter here another capacitor here which of course the light manufacturer has removed uh, maybe it saves some more cost uh, uh, but the idea is that the DC voltage comes from here and uh, the PTC 4501C is a constant current regulator or constant current control source. What it basically means is it drives the maximum current that's needed to get the full brightness out of this white LEDs. Right. So, so much for the circuit. As I said, if you really, if you want to understand or if you want to know how each of these components, at least how the full page, full wave bridge rectifier and how the constant current source works, Please do subscribe and watch my next video on the channel. Let's go back to our LED. All right, uh, let's do some basic tests. Uh, first, let's see if we can make the LEDs glow using the uh, the diode tester uh, on the multimeter. And uh, yeah, it's working, working, working. I would assume most of these would be working except for one here which looks like it's burnt and yep yep no life in it and my guess would be that this is the offending this is the offending LED uh, which is basically causing uh, the whole light to flicker uh, in fact if you notice uh, all the LEDs so all 48 of them are in series so which basically means if any one of them were to blow out uh, it will cause the whole light to malfunction or flicker okay uh, we can test uh, let's see if we can test okay let's see if we can test some capacitance again as I said maybe not the uh, best of ideas to do this but we can still give it a shot so <coughs> right, and uh, in fact this uh, capacitor here uh, says it is uh, Yep, 6.8 microfarads, so let's check. Uh, this is the negative, and this is of course, uh, so six, yeah, it has to be, this is the only one. Yeah, it's it's probably, yeah, it's not going to show the right value, as I said, because it's part of a circuit. So it's measuring the capacitance of the whole circuit between these two points, not just this capacitance. Uh, so interesting. Uh, I think the most interesting thing in this circuit this resistance is responsible for governing the current across this whole circuit I'm going to attempt uh, to fix this the idea will be to remove this uh, offending LED and actually just shot these two points with a solder so that the circuit can complete and uh, hopefully there is no more flickering Let's see if uh, we have managed to fix the light. Uh, I hope I've done a good soldering job. Uh, nice. Uh, it's bright and absolutely no flickering. Looks like it was a good job. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned something from this just like me. If you do like this content and if you do like this video, please do subscribe to my channel. This is the One Electron Universe. Take care. Goodbye.